Okay, we're going to continue talking about ionization energy, and in particular, um, hiccups in the trend of ionization energy. So as we go from um, a low atomic number to a high atomic number, moving left to right across a single period, we see that the trend in ionization energy generally goes up, but we have a couple of hiccups in that process. Uh, when we go from magnesium to aluminum, for example, the ionization energy goes down. And then again, from uh, phosphorus to sulfur, the ionization energy goes down. So what is the cause in that uh, change in the pattern? And the answer is in the ground state electron configurations. Okay, and to be clear, um, don't recall if I've mentioned this in the videos before, but whenever they're referring to the ground state electron configuration, they're referring to an unexcited state. Okay, not a boring state, but an unexcited state. So in our lectures, um, we did talk about excited states, and I'll cover excited states here in a little bit. But the ground state electron configuration is the normal standard electron configuration with nothing special about it, okay? So talking about the ground state electron configurations of um, a particular period going left to right across the same row, let's take a look at those configurations and see how things are arranged. So if I'm talking about sodium, we have the electron configuration of sodium, neon 3s1. So if I draw the boxes, for the, the valence electrons, we just have one electron in the 3s, right? That's easy to pull off. Okay, if it's easy to remove an electron, we're talking about low ionization energy. Okay, because it's one electron, there's no pairing, it's not even a full shell, nothing to really keep that electron in place. When we go to magnesium, right, we look at how that that be the S, we'll have two electrons, right? Higher is the effective, makes this more difficult. All right, a little bit more difficult, higher ionization energy. Okay, so far the trend is great, going up. All right, then we go to aluminum. All right, so we've got our 3s2. Then we've got our p orbitals. One electron in the p. Right? So if it drops that electron, then our um, the result will be a lower energy state. Okay? So p in the has the higher energy. So this makes this easier to remove. All right, and we'll see in our trend from magnesium to aluminum, the energy it takes to pull off that extra electron goes down. It makes it it's actually easier to do. All right, so higher energy, if it loses that one electron, then being at a nice stable place with a high Z effective at the 3s would be lower energy for that atom. Okay, easier to remove makes lower ionization energy. All right, so let's continue to look at our trend here. So silicon, neon, 3s2, 3p2. Right? Higher is the effective.
higher ionization energy. It gets a little tougher to pull that extra electron off. And just pulling one electron off, it doesn't really benefit the atom really at all energetically. So higher is the effective, it's going to hold on to that extra electron a little bit more. Phosphorus. Now we've got a completely half full shell. Right, so this is harder still. Right, because we have half full shell, which is very stable, and more is the effective. Okay, so higher ionization energy. All right now let's take a look. So when we went from, let's take a look at aluminum here. When we went from 3s2 to put one more in the p, that actually made things easier to remove that outside electron. So when we go and do that one more time, so when we go to sulfur, Right? This is where we were with phosphorus. Very stable, nice and happy. So when I add one more electron in there, it would rather be at that half full state. Right, So this is easier to remove. Right, Wants to be at the half full state. So lower ionization energy. Right, that's why we see that dip at sulfur. Right, so then as we continue to add, we get closer and closer to a completely full shell and the ionization continues to go up. Okay, so the trend in ionization energy is a general trend from left to right. But there are dips and valleys and it depends on where you are in the filling process of the orbitals. Right, so I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago Ioniz not ionization, but excited states. Okay, these are places where electrons are in places where they really shouldn't be because they have absorbed some energy and gone to a higher energy state. Okay, so previous chapter when we were talking about electrons absorbing energy, moving up to higher energy levels, moving from an n equals 2 to an n equals 3, or what have you, what have you, that's what we're talking about. Okay, so now we're going to talk about how to write it out and show it with the boxes. All right, so using carbon as an example. So the ground state, the unexcited state, for carbon, so carbon has um, helium, 2s2, 2p2, right? So helium is the 1s1, so there's the 1s, the 2s, and the 2p, right? So my electrons are going to be 2s2, or 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, okay? So if I move those around in any way or change their orientation, I'm going to create an excited state. So let's say I take one of those 2s electrons and I promote it up to the 2p. It absorbs some energy and um, moves to a higher energy orbital. Right? So electrons don't like to be paired if they can avoid it. All 
right? So that electron being in that higher energy orbital would rather be all by itself, right? I can also write this And actually, let me make that red so it stands out. Okay, I can have it promoted that way. Right? Higher energy is, a, is that promoted S electron. Is higher energy. It's an excited state. Okay. It would rather be down here. That's a lower energy state. And in fact, what will happen once you promote that up to an excited state, it will release that energy in the form of a photon. All right. Another way that we could look at this would be to have a non-parallel spin. This is higher energy because parallel spins, not spelling that right, are preferred. Okay, so anytime we write, write an electron configuration outside of the normal, right, if we move electrons into higher energy orbitals or we force them to pair when they would rather be single, or, um, or if we have uh, non-parallel spins when they ought to be parallel, these are all examples of excited state electron configurations. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video right here, and we'll come back with one more short video to talk about um, what happens when we try to uh, remove too many electrons from an atom.